density. Density is mass divided by volume. We use this density chart to help us to figure that out. We're going to focus just on the density side of things. So if you're missing density, you will take the mass here divided by the volume. But this triangle will help you find any of those. So what is density? Well, it is the amount of matter per unit of volume. So our mass divided by the volume, matter per volume. And there's the formula. You will, in general, see it as grams per centimeters cubed because the mass is usually going to be expressed in grams. Mass is your weight. And then your volume is usually going to be expressed as centimeters cubed. You might have heard this as centimeters to the power of three. Same thing. Or milliliters because our liquids are normally measured with centimeters or milliliters. But volume is the measure of a liquid. We learn this as I heart density because that will help you to remember that the mass is on top, the volume is on the bottom, and it is a fraction, and fractions mean divide. Yes, fractions mean divide. Here are the other formulas that you can use the triangle for. Again, we're just focusing on density, but if you were missing the volume, you could take the mass divided by the density to get the volume, or if you were missing the mass, you could take density times the volume, and that will give you the mass. We saw a question very similar to this last time we did density. It says, what would take up more space? We talked about how a pound of feathers and a pound of a brick is the same weight, but if you had, say, a kilogram of feathers and a kilogram of steel, which one's going to take up more space? Which one are you going to have to have a lot more of to get the same weight? If you guessed feathers are going to take up a lot more space than a kilogram of steel, then you are correct. Density is a measure of compactness. More compact is high density. Kind of compact is medium density. Very less compact is low density. Like when you have a solid, it's more dense. Liquid's a little less dense. And your lower density is going to be more like your gas. So how closely those atoms or molecules are, the more heaviness the density is, including how much space an object takes up. I heard this analogy about a suitcase. If you've got a suitcase and you just throw some stuff in there, it's not very packed, it can move around pretty easily. But if you shove all your stuff into a suitcase or your backpack, you shove everything in your backpack, it gets really dense, it starts feeling really heavy, and you've got everything packed really close. That's density, or the compactness will tell you that change in density, or if a uh, matter change has occurred. Like gas to solid. I can't pause it, they can hear us. Okay, gas. <laughs> How much <laughs> kinetic energy do the molecules have? Gas has the most kinetic energy, therefore cold air is more dense than warm air. Those molecules are moving around. Low pressure weather system means warmer air tends to rise. Higher pressure system indicates a colder, more dense air mass than that will sink. Liquids. The more dissolved liquids in a solution, the more dense, such as ocean water, because that's salt. Cold water and lakes tend to sink. Kinetic energy, again. Density layers to less dense layers. So the layers up top here are going to be less dense than the ones that are below. Or, like you said, the coldness, the colder ones are going to sink as well. So what would happen if we were to combine mercury that has a density like this and lead that has a density like this? Hmm, this one looks like it's more dense. Let's think about what would happen here. Make a prediction. 
Lead floats on liquid mercury because it is less dense. That's a pretty cool video uh, photo. <laughs> Solids, ice versus water. What do you think is less dense? Ice is less dense than water, which is why lakes and ponds have a thin layer of ice covering in winter with water underneath. Various rocks, woods, metals have a characteristic density specific to that substance. Wouldn't you like to have a bunch of this dense material? Oh, I do. Archimedes and the King's Crown. We watched this video already. And it's how he discovered to calculate density by taking mass divided by its volume. Regular shapes mass then determine the volume by formula, like length times width times height. And in irregular shapes, mass then measure displacement of water. So add the water to the graduated cylinder, like 50 milliliters, gently drop it in so it doesn't splash, then read the graduated cylinder, and so how much it raised up, subtract the first water level from the second, and this is the volume. Try this example. What would be the volume? It starts at 50 and will raise up to 60. You subtract it, so it's 60 minus 50. 10 milliliters. Here's another example. Maybe you start with 4 milliliters. You put in your irregular object and you get 6 milliliters. So you're going to... Take the six milliliters, subtract the original four for its displacement, and what would you get? Two! Two. <laughs> Here are some different densities. We talked about the density of water being one, and anything that is less dense, think about what that would do. Anything more dense, think about what that would do. So we're going to talk about sinking or floating. So air. Is that more or less dense than one? Well, it looks less dense to me. It will float. What about wood? Is that less than one? Float. Water is the thing here. Ice, <laughs> slightly less dense. It will float. Aluminum is more than one, so I think it will sink. Lead, way more than one. I think it will sink. Gold, oh my goodness, a lot, that's a big number. I think that will sink. Ethanol, like alcohol, the rubbing hands, is floating. Methyl. You can't see it anymore. No, I can't, but I know the number is 0 0.79. I think it will float. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Good and job on densities. <laughs>